Hello everybody and welcome back to modded area door. I am recording once more during a live stream and that's super amazing because other people are supporting me here with the stuff that we are doing already in the preparation for the episode. They help me now a lot by yeah, um, basically be making sure that I don't waste my materials on crafting recipes that I shouldn't do. But we'll come to that in just a moment. Last time we were building the thing that you can see behind me, the mob spawner. And let me tell you, it's not working. Because uh, I don't think you will notice, but I rewired everything. Um, the power came last time from down below and the um, mob essence came from up above. So I changed that around and the reason for that is I want to have it more organized. And uh, so if we now go down here, there will be a corridor for all mob essence stuff. So this is my uh, pipe corridor for the mob essence. You can see that this here is uh, going into the tank. The tank is right back there. And this one is coming out of the tank. By the way, I haven't uh, told in the last episode, I also got an ender tank. The reason for that is the pipe that I had from Chris's base was so long that it took forever to empty out uh, the stuff into the tank here. So instead I removed the pipe again and uh, put in an ender tank because then it's not searching for uh, the tank for so long. Because what is happening here with those transfer nodes is that it just goes through all the pipe parts and uh, checks if there is a connection to something where it can put stuff. So with the ender tank here we reduce the amount of pipes we are using in the system and so uh, it will be quicker to empty out stuff into the tank. The pipe then here at the bottom comes out of the tank and that will go into the room here. So right there into here and then up to the mob spawner or the auto spawner. And uh, with that I still have the system where I've got one from the top, one from the bottom. But the energy cable is uh, switched now to the top. If you remember last time I told you that we are running out of energy. Back here we've got our three lava generators which were by far not enough to power up our system here. So this morning I was uh, sitting down and doing some calculations because um, there are a few limits on uh, what you can put through a, a cable in modded Minecraft. And uh, with these limits we have to deal and so I was thinking what would be the best system then to set everything up. But we'll come to that in just a bit. I want to show you first another thing that I did. Uh, because if we just go through here there is now a room. Oh I was confused because I said I uh, thought it would be here but this is the tank. <laughs> there is now a staircase going to a room upstairs and this will be our power room. So this will be the room where we produce all the power we need. And as you can see I've got some prototypes here for how to lay out power. I didn't have the blocks on me that I would need. So I just built it out of uh, basic stone and um, basically all the, these things have the same concept. We want to put different um, yeah, power generators next to each other, supply them with lava. These uh, granite blocks here uh, mark a lava tank, want to supply them and then produce energy and bring it out uh, through an energy pipe. But I can take down uh, these ones now because um, I uh, was thinking now of another system that we want to use. Uh, another layout that I haven't got here that I can show you but I can just show to you whenever we've got uh, the real um, yeah, materials. So I would just quickly tidy up one side here of the room so we've got a little bit of space. Or actually, we, we could just start over here. So let me take this away. And then we should have enough space here. Fill in those blocks so I can mine it with my hammer. That's quicker. And take out the last pipes here. Um, but this room should be large enough to put down some power systems. And uh, so we need to craft some now. But before we do that, let me show you. This is the uh, area where we want to have the cables then and I already laid them down. It looks super tidied up now. Um, the cable that we saw before goes down here to the room with the mob spawner. The cables here on the sides go to the uh, grinders that kill the mobs then. And then in between I disconnected those chests from the system we had before and I wanted to put an ender chest later on in the center which I can then hook up to my sorting area so I can bring the items right from here to the sorting area which will be quite cool. 
So now it's enough of talking about concepts and stuff. Now we need to do something. And uh, we want to start by some crafting. And the crafting will be extremely quick today because I already have everything laid out. And that's what uh, the stream helped me with. Um, because I don't want to go with lava generators anymore. Because lava generators output 40 RF per tick. And uh, that is not the maximum that you can get in this mod pack. There's something uh, out of another mod. Uh, so let me uh, bring it up real quick here. Uh, there is uh, the lava generator that we were using before, which is this one here. This one produces 40 RF per tick. And it uses a lot of gold, which uh, was kind of annoying for me because my gold supply is not that high. Um, and then there is also uh, another thing that is called the magmatic, uh, magmatic, uh, so what is it called? S dynamo, not servos, dynamo. And uh, this one has an output of uh, 80 RF per tick. So it can output way more energy and we need less of them to power that up. So now it's about crafting. Before I do that, I need to quickly empty my inventory. So I've got enough space for everything. And uh, then you can see all these crafting benches and they all already contain recipes. What we need for this is uh, the transmission coils and the gears. So first up, we want to craft those so transmission coils and the gears. And with those, we can then go ahead and craft ourselves already the servos. So here we've got them. They will get fueled by lava. So of course, we also need uh, lava then. And that's why I've got some crucibles prepared over here. And uh, then in here, we've got some energy storage because if I want to create energy, I should be able to store it. So I'm creating some uh, leadstone energy cells and the people in the stream told me that leadstone isn't too good. So we we'll put them in here again and make them hardened energy cells frames instead. And uh, then we've got one thing left, which is the lava production. And for that, we could use the good old cobblestone generator that we used before. And um, I don't want to do that because I don't have the space to put in a cobblestone generator and that stuff. So I want to use something else instead, which is called, and let me bring it up real quick, because uh, Igneos in, oh, what was it called? Ah, there we go. The Igneous Extruder, which is basically a cobblestone generator in a block. And uh, this is craft like this. Is, it looks quite complicated and it was the most complicated in the thing. Uh, we need some silver gears because with silver gears we can make... Um, what can we make with the silver gears? I thought it was for the machine frame. <laughs> Let me look it up. Uh, there's different machines frame and we want the basic one. Yeah, it is like this, the glass and then the tin gears. This is silver gears. Whoa, that is bad. I just wasted a lot of my materials. We need tin and we need iron to make myself some more gears. So let's do that. Half of that in there. Oh, it looks so similar. Tin gear. All right, but now we should be able to put it in here and make the machine frames. And uh, then with this setup, we can make uh, pneumatic servos. Oh, that was where I got the servo word from. And then we also need some copper gears. And with all of that stuff, we can then make ourselves some uh, Igneous extruders and I actually made too many machine frames and too many of these servos. Maybe one day we'll need those but uh, for now uh, we can go down to the uh, actual place and I think I will uh, go ahead and make a little jump cut here and put all these materials that I've got here in place and then afterwards show you the setup that I have got planned to create energy. This is the future me. Apparently we just made hardened energy 
energy cell frames and we need of course hardened energy cells so i quickly need to craft those therefore i need redstone conductance coils and with those i can hopefully make the real energy cells that we oh they don't stack all right we'll leave the rest here but with those i can now continue on As you can see I am already producing lava here and the lava from the crucibles gets into this tank, gets over and gets already pumped into the uh, dynamos which already produce energy and I already put in a cable that goes through the ceiling up but it's not connected yet but because I want to fill up the hardened energy cell first and uh, now I can quickly show you upstairs how it looks, should eat, otherwise people will complain again that I'm not eating in the comment section. And uh, then, yeah, up here, the cable comes up. I will connect it over to there as soon as the energy cell is full. But now I want to quickly talk about some, uh, yeah, about the energy consumption here or about how the energy gets used up and uh, what different types of energy we have here because we go through different stages with the energy. We've got uh, first up, uh, yeah, our basic energy producing mechanism which is this thing here and also by the way the people in the stream told me that I don't have to connect uh, water and lava to this because uh, creating cobblestone won't actually uh, use up any of that so I can take these things out again I don't need those uh, but yeah once we produce lava that's our first energy type and this gets into the tank and then the lava gets again converted into electricity and the way I can then see if I produce enough lava is basically by checking on the tank here because this shows me if it's empty like it is now, so this always gets drained out, I'm not producing enough lava for my machines because um, yeah, I'm using it all up and cr uh, creating energy out of it. Uh, but right now that's okay because I am using a lot of energy to fill the cell. We will have to check on that as soon as the machines are running. And uh, then if the machines uh, take up too much energy or use up too much energy, then this energy cell will tell me uh, that uh, there's more energy used than produced because uh, the yeah, energy level of the cell will go down and then I know that I need to put in more of uh, the energy, um, yeah, the dynamo setups. And I've got enough space here in the room that I can put another one here and then different lava generators next to it. I'm quite sure that these four crucibles won't be enough so I will reproduce this machine here to the side. Uh, so we have two or three of those and if even three times the energy is not enough to um, power up all the machines that I'm planning then um, I will just extend this room to the back. And uh, yeah, the thing with the cable is now that it only can transport 1000 RF per tick so it wouldn't matter if I connect up more dynamos to this because there can just be 1000 RF per tick uh, coming through this cable and so if we take a look uh, up here again uh, if we've got a machine that uses up a lot of energy like our auto spawners do I'm quite sure uh, we can just hook up a um, another energy cell here and uh, then what that does is that there can be 1000 RF per, per tick coming through this cable 
Uh, but also if it splits up into different cables, there can be 1000 going this way, 1000 going that way, and 1000 going that way at the same time, because um, there uh, will be enough energy stored in the cell. And if I need more than 1000 in total, I can hook up another um, cable from over there to one of those energy cells that will be repeated in this direction, because this is not the only room there will be. Uh, then I can have uh, them just connect to the energy cells and like this I can put more than 1000 RF per tick into my whole system here, which would be pretty cool I think. So I will wait now until the energy cell here is filled up, which might not take too long anymore. Decorate those things a little bit so they don't look that, um, yeah, that uh, technical or just technical anymore. And uh, then I will be back and we will connect that up and test our machines and see how many mobs are actually spawning in the mob spawner. So I think that we've got enough lava now because this is all filled up. Uh, the dynamos itself are filled up with lava and I put a lot of lava into the tank. Whoops, can't right click the tank. Uh, but we can see it, it's filling up. Actually, it's emptying out sometimes a little bit, but that's just because I think that energy is lost in the system here. Uh, but that's okay, we are producing... Has been struck with frostbite? What happened there? I will have to check on this video. Um, but uh, yeah, we want to now um, set up everything here so we can start the machines. So I already placed in another hardened energy cell. If we hook this up, uh, we should see that this is getting powered in theory, but it's not. Blue is input, orange is output, uh, they said. Uh, oh, there was something spawning. The energy is going into the system. So let's check that out real quick. Um, let's go down here and see. There we go, stuff is spawning. Uh, let me go downstairs actually and go inside. Those things are pretty crazy. Uh, we can see energy is full to the top always. And now it's just the work and the idle and actually the mob essence. Whoa, we are burning through a lot of mob essence, I guess. Um, hey, uh, let me quickly get uh, the other spawn eggs because I don't have them on me. And then we check the same with endermen because that's the real interesting part for now because we need some ender pearls. So I'll be right back. Alright, so here I've got now the other spawn eggs. Let's start with the Enderman, uh, which is this one. Let's put it in and see how many we get spawning now. In theory, there should be quite a lot. This is going down and work is going up. And it's spawning Enderman. And they should be killed and we should collect the Ender Pearls. There we go, that is better speed. Oh yeah, I like this. And let's try the same with witches. Because uh, I think that the witches require less energy. But I don't think I want to be inside the room if, if they spawn. Uh, now I'm stuck. <laughs> Let me get out of here. Upstairs and there we go. Witches are spawning. So that is pretty epic. And then right now the items are collected back here in those chests. And also in these uh, transfer pipes. And uh, we need to change that around. We need to hook up an ender pearl to that. Uh, so, um, not an ender pearl, an ender chest. So we can collect the items and bring them to wherever we want. So I will now focus next on getting ender chests. Oh, ghast. Let me catch it, if I can. <laughs> yeah, catch these guys actually come can. pretty low. Quick, 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 get him, Benny, get him. Run, Benny! Uh, he's too fast. This would be amazing if you can get him. Get him! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't have it on camera! No! Uh, no. Okay, we're well, releasing you, him again. You can take. No, no, no! <laughs> take a highlight from the stream. Yeah, I can take a highlight from the stream. And from now on, I will be recording. Uh, I think it was a slime that hit me, actually. No, I hit you. Oh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, blazes. And it, did, it did nothing. Do you oh, want I'm to have the honor of catching one? Sure. Come on, Blaze, <laughs> catch one of your family. Ah! They're attacking me. 
And there he goes. Right. Oh, there's also a wither skeleton. We need to get him. Mom, go, 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 <laughs> go. Ah. I got my mom. Quick, take it. <laughs> Where's the wither skeleton? Uh, I guess I got him. Let's get out of here. We are back from our little adventure into the nether and I've got some mobs with me that we want to spawn. And so I've got here uh, some blazes, some skeletons and the gas. And the skeleton is actually the wither skeleton. So if you spawn an exact copy, we'll get also a, a wither skeleton. But let's start with the blaze. This might be now a little bit dangerous. See, energy is good, mob essence is good. So we should see a blaze any second. And then we can collect blaze rods like that for the ender chests. There we go, first place. I don't want to get shot. Oh, hey, Blaze. Ah, he got me. <laughs> Let me take it out. But that's a good idea. I could have killed him. Okay, next, uh, we'll do with a skeleton. Just to show you, it will spawn a normal skeleton at first. Let's see. I just go down. There we go. There we go. Oh, work needs to go up. Normal skeleton. But if I change this around to exact copy. Uh, it needs a lot more work and so a lot mob essence. Yeah, I need speed upgrades uh, for the um, transfer node. Otherwise, we don't get enough mob essence here. Oh, now we are stuck. Let me just wait here until we've got enough work in there. Oh, there we go. There was another bunch of mob essence. And now the work is going up again. And we should see our wither skeleton spawning. And he withered me right away. I had to kill him. <laughs> but we've got a 2.5% chance of getting actually um, wither skulls with that. So that's pretty awesome. And now uh, the rear test. Maybe uh, Blaze, are you still around? Oh, you're yeah, upstairs. Um, you might be able to open the door for me. <laughs> is there no button? Uh, there is, but I want to be quick. So oh, okay. uh, just open it and then I will place this in and walk backwards. So... Go, 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 go. Yeah, I'm out. Actually, can you open it again? Can I reach it? Yes, I can. So we can check this out even. Oh, oh, wait, I placed the wrong mob. Whoops, <laughs> uh, open it again. Thank you. Uh, we want to spawn the ghast. Uh, I don't think that ghasts are working. There's no work here for ghasts. Oh, there's. Oh. What? Um, it's not enough. Whoa, oh. we had a ghast. <laughs> Give me another one, please. I want to go upstairs and take a look at that. Let me quickly run. Before it spawns the new one. It takes a moment because it has to find a spot. Whoa, it's so huge. Whoa, that is so cool. So, um, yeah, we just need now more rooms of this uh, to be able to spawn different stuff. And I think I want to leave it running with blazes for a little bit. Because we already have a little bit of supply with ender pearls in there. It's a little hard to reach, but you can see uh, only in this uh, chest two stacks here and now a ghast here. So we can craft more safari nets too. And I think I will hook up the ender chests next. So let me get everything together and then we can craft and uh, color the ender chest. To get the items into the storage area, we need some of those here, which are ender chests. And the ender chests in modded are a little different than in vanilla Minecraft because you can link up different ender chests to each other by using different colors. I think I want to put it here for now. I don't know if I can break it like this or if I need silk touch. But right now, if you take a look inside, um, let's just put a sulfur. So whoever opens this white, white, white ender chest in the future will find one piece of sulfur inside. Um, but if we now color code it, I will use orange because that's my color on the server. And then I will use red, uh, yellow as the second color. The sulfur is gone because this is now a different ender chest. And like this, we can now go down. Actually, let me put something inside just to prove the concept. Some bones and uh, then down here uh, we can quickly go to the spots where we collect items which uh, are already hooked up in the right way. So there's item transfer nodes so everything goes inside. So here's one 
and we can just put uh, an ender chest in the center. If I can reach it there. And now we put also orange and yellow. Actually, there might have gone some items now into the uh, white, white, white one. So we might need to check afterwards. <laughs> Uh, and here's the second spot, so let me take this away so we can reach it. There's the two transfer nodes, and uh, if we just take a look inside. Yeah, there's plenty of stuff going in. I need to clean that up. Uh, somebody will help me, hate me. I don't know who got uh, white as the color on the server, but I'm basically putting stuff into this inner chest. So this is now hooked up, and if we go upstairs again, and uh, then grab ourselves some other items, uh, like a transfer node and then maybe an iron chest that we can upgrade to a diamond or even a crystal chest in, at some point. Um, then we can get the items even out of the ender chest and sort it eventually. So if I just look here, I don't think I've got, oh, I've got an iron chest here still. So that's just a chest with iron around if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I did it in the very beginning. And then a trans, uh, I should not press T in here. Transfer node, there we go. And now hook this up. I will rearrange this, this is just temporary. Uh, we should be able to see that all the items will be put into this iron chest now. So whatever goes into here will move over into my new uh, mob items collecting area, which is pretty cool. So I've got everything in one spot. Two days later, the storage system changed a little bit because I was farming for quite some time. And as you can see, I've arranged the materials now in caches. If we just take a look at the ender pearls, we've got 516 of those and blaze rod 602 because this was running overnight and emptying out my complete tank of mob essence while other people were around on the server. Um, but uh, this would have been too much for a single chest, so now it's connected in caches and the way this works is I've got a transfer node here, this goes to the back, then uh, zigzag with a pipe behind these caches, uh, going over to these caches and then going back into this ender chest, which, which is a different one, and I've got a second one downstairs so I can access uh, the um, items from both sides, because in here I have all items that doesn't get filtered, like uh, wither skeletons, guys. I will come to that in just a second. And also my safari nets. And the wither skeletons, guys, I didn't get from the grinders. I don't know if I can actually get some. I don't think so. I doubt it. Um, but it was super easy to just disconnect the grinders and kill wither skeletons then with my looting three beheading sword. And with that, I got plenty of wither skeleton skulls. So uh, the energy situation that we figured out today is working extremely well. Uh, I over-engineered that maybe a little bit. Um, so uh, we've got plenty of energy now at all time. The problem that is now there is that we run out of mob essence. And so I need to find a way next uh, how to create more mob essence so we can have the spawners running all the time. Uh, but that is something I think for the next episode uh, because I'm totally running out of time for this one. So I hope that you enjoyed it and I also hope that you enjoyed the live streams. Thanks to the people that were in the live streams and were helping me out with that. Um, but uh, yeah, that's concluded for today. And um, if you liked it, then feel free to leave a like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and share this video with your friends. And I hope then to see you in the next one. Until then, have a great day.